First of all, I'd like to give honor to God and thank Him for waking me up this morning and getting me here to the Church of the Living God. Today, we're blessed. We're blessed by having our assistant pastor, Billy Dowdy, bring us the word. It's coming about having, there's so many blueprints out there, having one that we should follow, one that Jesus has set for us by his sacrifice, and how we spend our time, and how we should follow him. So I'm sitting back, looking forward to it. Hope you are. Sit back and then pay attention, because you know how Billy is. He brings it to you. Enjoy. Good afternoon to all the viewers, listeners, members, families, and friends. We're in a season of building, restoring, and healing. Also unity. That's our mindset in these times that we're living in now. Uh, hello to the members of the Church of the Living God. I recognize Bishop and Dr. Ernest B. Dowdy as the Bishop of the Church of the Living God. The Bishop, uh, I thank God for him, his family. Uh, honor God, who's the head of my life. Thank him for his son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. The awesome dunamis power that we have received as the result of our belief. And then uh, to uh, those who make it possible, I thank God for all the, the uh, servants, for God's house, for the kingdom work. Thank God for the president of the media department, Brother Deval Henry. Thank God for Brother Charles Booker, who is our media influencer. Thank God for Deacon, all the deacons in the house. Thank God for Deacon Beverly, and you know the deacons of the Church of the Living God who makes this place such a, a wonderful place to come out and hear the word of God. But all honor is to God. And if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be standing here. And so I thank God for this opportunity. Thank the organization again uh, for being instrumental in sharing the gospel. That is what we do. We share and live the gospel. Uh, we are thankful that we know as members that it is the vision of the Church of the Living God to spread the gospel, to share the gospel, the love of God. We Today's topic uh, I will be discussing is a, the thought is a hardening heart will slow your spiritual growth and will stun your, your direction. Uh, we need a change of heart. Uh, the solution today is in 1 John 2.15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the final conclusion for you to receive after this message is that Romans 8, 22, or, or, or rather he, Hebrews 13 and 5, uh, let your conversation be without covetousness, content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that... We may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do to me. We are to equip and grow ourselves for that purpose. And so we always remember that there is what? In everyone's life, there is three things that happen. There's time, purpose, and mission. I say that many times because that's our task, that's our day to day, that's our walking, that's our doing, and that's our sharing. The revival to bring us back to reconciliation started a long time ago, over 2,000 years. I'm reminded of the Holy Spirit. I'm reminded of God moving. I'm reminded of Jesus after he paid the price telling the disciples to meet in the upper room. And when you go to the upper room, of course, someone's going to meet you there. And the way it went was the Bible tells me after they got together and they was on one accord, 
the, the spirit came down like a mighty rushing wind. And they were able to praise God and speak the gospel and share the gospel of what Christ had done in all the languages. And so we know that there is no difference between Greek, Jew, or Gentile. God is concerned about all his people. And I thank God that he was able to come by and allow me to hear his gospel and to hear and to believe what he did, what his only begotten son did in a sacrifice. And so I just want you to know that and to remember that the revival started long time ago and is not going to be televised. It's going on right now. The Spirit of God is here now and has come to lead and to guide us in all truth. St. John 16 and 13. We know that Jesus paid the price at Calvary 6 and 19. And when we experience God in our minds, we're transitioning from carnality to spirituality and reality. And in our fourth dimension, and in, our trans and in our transitioning, our mind goes and we must prepare, we must train, we must meditate, we must work through our mind, which brings us to a pattern of thinking. Know us, a way that I think every day. And so when I begin to develop my pattern, then God is going to take me through any circumstances that I have, anything that's going on in my life, I'm going to be able to see or feel the presence of God, the manifestation of God. We, we're able to feel the angels around us. And so if you would just pray with me in this moment right now, that God's word will be heard all over the land. I say to you, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in God's sight, who is my strength and my redeemer. I come to you in peace, and I hear you back in peace. And so these are words of peace, and these are words of encouragement for you to accomplish what? Your purpose. Your pattern of success is going to come when you develop a pattern of routine of thinking. And so today, I come to talk to you about a few things, and I want to give you a blueprint uh, of your day-to-day, um, -day, your blueprint of your whatever is coming your way. We have a blueprint. Our blueprint uh, if, if we're going through something on the blueprint, I find that there's a connection to God. And so you have to have that pattern and that mind and that Noah's mind has to click to that. Because if not, you're going to have trouble reaching your mission, your purpose, and the thing that God has called you to do. And remember, that's what the enemy comes to do, to kill, steal, and to destroy. The Bible said that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Now listen, he's like, but it depends on your noise. It depends on your renewed mind. It depends on your training of your mind and your heart, which is what I come to talk to you about, a hardened heart. But in that mind being transitioned now, now you don't have to fall back on those old pattern, old stinky patterns of thinking that'll get your spiritual being in trouble. And so we come to God today and I come today to remind you, remind myself that I always got to know who God is. I always got to know what happened. I can't remind myself of anything unless I know 
what happened. And what happens connects my belief, and my belief will take me on my mission. And I'll spend my time doing the things that I need to do to prepare myself to what? To do the same mission that Jesus did, to seek and to save the lost. For God to use you and I to have an encouraging word that will release someone from the bondage of distress and all those things that come after us that takes our mind off of who God is. So I just come by to share a moment with you there. You cannot never forget the course has been set for us. We must, our mind, our mind, will, and emotion, and our soul is made aware of spiritual things at the renewed process. Romans 8 and 5. This sets the course of right thinking that we might be gospel carriers and bearers, bearers in our vessel, okay? And so... If you're not at that point, I'd speak real briefly to the unbelievers. Get yourself in right now. The Word of God says in Romans 10 and 9 that if you shall confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. And now from there, your mission, your time, your purpose now is to grow and have a fulfilled life and to share a good life. Well, you know what Jesus said. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly to counter that thing that the enemy come to do. And so if we're believers, who, raise your hand out there, audience, that, that don't want to grow. If you want to grow, then you're going to have to have some knowledge. And your knowledge is going to come to your decision because he's a free will God. To bring us now back to the believers is that now we have accepted God and now God breathes in us. He brings us to life. So, well, how does God breathe? Well, I have many thoughts in my days, but because of my seeing, my, the principle of seeing the manifestation of God, I can see with it, but if I couldn't see, I could hear the word, and then that comes into me and brings me life. Because now, if God is the God of the universe, and God has spoken, and everything that God speaks of comes to pass. So it's my duty to spend my time looking for the word of God. It is the word of God that sharpened in a two-edged sword. If you want to know the truth about you, you want to know the truth about our flesh condition, the word of God reveals that to us every day. I know now sometimes we don't want to see it's, you know, the, the flesh is, but that's okay, because the flesh is ugly. Those thoughts are ugly, but that's why I love Jesus. Jesus paid the price for when I'm off base, when I'm sidetracked, when, when things are happening, I, I can't really see God. The, I love the Spirit of God because now the Spirit of God comes to let me know. The Spirit of God comes. This is that transformation that comes within us. A deeper understanding brought by the Spirit of God. Brought by the transition of what happened when Jesus died, rose, and, and ascended to heaven. He said when they were, and I know those disciples was pretty sad to see him. I know they were. They, they had to be. If you, if you had a chance to walk with Jesus, Jesus in, his, in his physical, and he telling you he's leaving? But Jesus told him, he said, if I don't go, <laughs> we all going to die, really. Because he said, think about it, Jesus, if Jesus didn't go, 
we went out of the Holy Spirit. Jesus would, Jesus would have been a good person, died, but I'm still not saved. I'm still not connected with God. But Jesus, that blood, he shed. I didn't share any blood. That's why I better keep my act together. If I love God, I better keep my act together because Jesus made a sacrifice for us. He made that sacrifice for us. Now, now, as a believer, what do you got to do? Believe that. I messed up. I got angry at my wife. What do I do? I need to recover. Well, I know I'm going to recover unless, this is what I'm going to be talking about the next 10 or 15 minutes, unless my heart is hardened. If my heart is hardened, that's it. I can't move forward. The goal is to be changed and conformed into the image and growing and experiencing the fruit and the contentment of being a believer. That's the goal. I'm, I'm supposed to be content with whatever's going on in my life. Now, maybe you're not, but I'm saying if you're not, this moment I'm speaking to you now, you ask God right now, whatever it is, you say, Lord, I'm, I'm worried about it. When we worry about things beyond a day, we disrespect God. So we pray. When we pray, we respect God. So something's bothering me. I'm getting ready to pray. But maybe it was so much going on, I couldn't pray. But the Holy Spirit is coming. He's there. He's always there. And he's there reminded you. But can you, like I said before, can you release your spirit to God's spirit? And can you allow God to speak to your spirit? And then you allow that to happen in your soul to where you're content that God heard me. I believe that he will release me. I believe that the Holy Spirit came to comfort me. And right now I'm uncomfortable. You can say that sitting in your seats. You can say that at home. You can say, I, I'm uncomfortable, Lord. Bring me through. Well, there's a few things you need to know. And if you content, then now you're, you're building. You're striving. We're in a season now where God is, His Holy Spirit should be so strong upon us now because there's so much talk of death in the land. But, there, but, there, but for us as believers, there's talk of eternity in the land. There's talk of, well, someone might be leaving. Yeah, it's, it hurts my heart. More like Paul, what I want to talk to you about a little bit about is the concern for the believer and the unbeliever. When we see someone go through something, that's on all of us. But then we have to kick over and know that what? Believers what? We eternal. I don't care what it looks like in this third dimension, but we are eternal. And God paid that price. And we in the garden, uh, 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 Adam in the garden was whole. Didn't lack anything. And that's our, and that's our going forward. Our going forward is like that. If you're, if you're down now, okay. But your going forward is a lot better. Well, God has got a mansion for you. He's got a space for you. And so all we have to do now is share that. You get something good, you want to share it. I want to share it with my brothers, the church here, and the many times the brothers, sisters. We're sharing what, what God gives us in good. We're sharing. We, we share the word as much as we can. And I thank God for it. And so that's the place that we come to. Remember this, 
Not forgetting that in self-actualization, that moment happened, could be happening right now, that moment happening that you said, I need God. Once you said that, something inside of your soma, inside of your mind, something clicked. And that's all you have to do is, 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 is make mention and tell God. There's one, one sin that we fight with, but, but it makes so much sense when you think about it. Say, well, if you blaspheme God, well, that would be like to, to get an image in your head so that the enemy won't roar at you when you do something and you have to ask God for forgiveness because the Bible said that uh, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so when you go that way, you got you to have the word with you. And God, and, 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 and now you can, you can share and grow in that word as we move forward with what God has for us. And so as we are moving through our process of life, we're sharing the gospel. We're receiving from God those things that he wants us to receive from him. And so in our day to day, you know the the the. The five principles that we should be living by to grow, believe, hear, see, obey, and share the gospel. When we're doing those things, we're, we're doing our day-to-day. -day. Whatever comes up, it can't get us because we're going to hear something from God. We're going to, and, and, and many times when you're going through something and it's really on you, that's one of your strongest times because you don't have nothing else to do but hear God. And if God say, make this move, you got to make that move because it's like, it's a faith move. It's a faith thought for you to go forward and minister to me while you're going through something. That's what Paul did. That's what, that's what Paul did when we look at in the Romans. We're going to hit that. We're going to do okay. But... In your day-to-day -day transforming mind, meditating mind, you have to know three things to keep growing. Three principles, simple principles that you already know. Remembering not to forget God. But if you've been ha hanging out with God, reading the word, hanging out with some brothers, uh, and even if you wasn't, if God got his sights on you, which he do, he came to seek and save the life. God is watching. But us as believers moving forward, we must know his voice. We got to know when God's speaking to us. We got to know how he speaks to us. That's the experience. That's something you can't take away from no one. When you were playing basketball and you shot the ball and it went in, can nobody tell you that ball didn't go in? You know that ball went in and guess what you wanted? You wanted some points. You wanted a stat to show that that did happen. Well, that's what happened already in our lives when we experienced God. When we experienced him, how could we forget? If he delivered you, how can we forget? He delivered everybody hearing me now from the ability of, of just dying through salvation. He, he brought that in. And so no one needs to die. Just confess and believe. Understand, second thing, understand what God is saying to you. you got to know what God is saying to you. You can't run out in the middle of the street and God tell you, don't go. <laughs> Who told you to do that? When Moses marched in front of the, when he had to split the, the waters, who told him to do it? It didn't matter though, huh? Because he was just following God. That's the contentment. That's the peace that we get. That's something people, you can't even tell them how that feel unless they're in it. Because it's God. It's like that shot. How good did you feel when you shot the ball and it went in? And it was a three. You, the ball went in. So it's like, wow, man. And guess what? This kind of gospel works with us. And everybody on the team, no. You got that rebound. You know, you made that shot. Everybody know That's all we're doing as Christians. It's like you said the right thing to the person. You gave them a scripture. You blessed them. 
Why did they do it? It leaves an impression in the person's mind. The person thinking, why did he do it? Well, they kind of know because remember, it's like shooting a shot. It's like, I seen him went in. That guy's different. He's different. He's a God guy. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Trying to not to make the regular mistakes. But here's the one today that's in action. Know what to do next. Know what to do next. After you come through whatever, just know what is the next thing that I need to do? And then I'm going to, and then God will see you through. Remember, Malachi 3.6 says this, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. We're not consumed. Sometimes we think, well, God's taking a long time. Things are happening alone. But the by second Peter said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. And isn't repentance a wonderful thing? That's why we're comfortable. That's why we can, we can pray. That's why we go to God. Because that's one of the strongest things that we can have to do in our life. And guess what? To put this in this message, to bring it around to where it needs to be at, is now uh, our heart. If your heart don't come to repentance, then you're lost can't get there. It'd be like, uh, I want to go, I want to get to heaven, I want to get there, but I'm stepping all over Jesus. Stepping past Jesus. God, no, God don't work like that. God said, you follow, he said, if you come in this way, any other way, you're a thief and a robber. If you, come, if you miss my son, you rob him. You, 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 you ain't on the track of what he paid for. You're not on that track. You're not there. And so we must be, we must look to Jesus as our author and the finish of our faith. We must meditate on the word of God and be led by the spirit. Now, there is a, you, you, I, I want you to take from this teaching here, this blueprint. In the book of Colossians, chapter 1. Chapter 1 in the book of Colossians, uh, we find Paul uniting in a letter to the group and what he wants. He's feeling such a way that it the attacks that's happening because of Christ during this time is pretty fierce but Paul I mean yes Paul is saying to the Colossians is that he would rather take their place he would rather get in and take their place in the suffering. He said, if he could become a curse to save them, he would. That's the blueprint. Sacrifice. When we think about the blueprint, what we think about is that Jesus was the blueprint. And when we look at Jesus, we see what happened. They called him a devil. They said he was hanging out with Bezalel. They, they uh, was mad at him because he, they thought he considered himself as God and messed them up. They took him to council. They questioned him there. They put a thorn on his head. He took, now, now this is all sacrifice. Because this is Jesus. This is the blueprint. He's laying it out. And so, the blueprint given 
to Jesus takes him to the grave. But then he ascends out. But the part that I want you to take today is the sacrifice that he made. And that's what Paul was saying in Colossians. He said, if I could be a curse to save you, that's what I would. So I ask you today, what's your sacrifice? Like Jesus did? And can you stand in there like Paul did? Can you give up some things to get to the point where God can use you even more? Can you get to the point to where when the enemy is coming like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour, can you make the stand? Are you able to stand in your faith? Are you able to shoo him away? Because of the, not because you're so tough, but because of the word of God. What sacrifice? We, and when I'm not talking about a sacrifice to get to heaven. Jesus paid that price. But I'm talking about the sacrifice now. That an unbeliever or a believer might need. Are you able to stand in that position? And to stand in there for Christ? Because you know God is going to favor you. You know God is going to get you through. You know in our transforming mind because we're transforming every day. And so when I'm changing channels and changing directions in my mind, that's God speaking every day. And every day my mind is being transformed. But the moment that my mind is not being transformed, then I fall in the old pattern. And in that old pattern, my heart, or it could be the challenge of the thing that you want to do. And in conclusion to this part of what I'm saying to you, was the problem was, was Jesus already said that in the heart is all kind of sins, adultery, everything is in that heart. But it comes to that place of repentance. When we have the self-actualization, when I see myself in that mirror and I know that there's nothing good there, it's at that moment of, of, of spiritual actualization when I realize that God is actually talking to me and all I have to do is accept him in. And when I accept him in, I'm going to win every circumstance that come my way. And so it's that heart. Now what I want to warn you about the heart real quickly is that a hardened heart, the heart that was hardened that I want you to think about was Pharaoh. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Bible says that God hardened his heart. We understand that to mean that God allowed him to keep running his course. And we see what happens in blatant disobedience. That's the hardened heart. When, and, 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 and don't think it was just Pharaoh. When God, that's why I said we got to hear the voice of God. When God is speaking to us and he's telling us something that we should let go. What was the purpose of, of God and, and Moses and the conversation with Pharaoh? Was that my people are hurting and I want you to let them go. You let my, but Pharaoh caught up, which we can be caught up. That's why I'm hitting this one this time is a hardened heart of disobedience. You know, viewers, we know what God has told you, what you can and can't, shouldn't do for your health, not his health. And when we don't, we find ourselves in the situation that Pharaoh was. He knew, he knew those people, but what was it? What can happen to us because we are growing? 
God has given us a supernatural ability during this time to what? To share the gospel, to become the lights to the world. God has given us that at this very moment that I'm speaking to you now. But if you want to be disaved and disobedient, you fall into the pattern of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh what? It costed him what? Yeah, God got close, didn't he? That's what's so fabulous about God is that God can take, know that this person, is, it, it, he probably, he's going to hell. God know everything. But God yet can take that person to save somebody else. That, that's to me is like, that's God. That's, that's, and we've seen it over and over. And so a hardened heart will stain your progress. Disobeying, willfully disobedience leads to a hardened heart. You understand? First time, let my people go. No. Now you know after a while, somebody's telling Pharaoh, well, they want the, the children of Israel. He know that. He said, no. Because it's Moses, God, his power. So let him go one time. He come again. He, let him go, Pharaoh. No, that's a blatant disobedience. Same thing that will happen to our lives. What I want to show you in this closing moment. It got harder. Pharaoh, when we move in the wrong direction, that heart gets harder and harder until what? We, this death is in the land. This curse is in the land. Guess what? It's going to touch your baby now. It's going to touch you. So we, as believers, have to make sure, and that's, and, and, and that's what... Um, uh, Paul was warning was uh, disobedience uh, which will produce a hard heart. So a hardened heart will slow your spiritual growth, stun your growth to where you're not affected. And in this season, I told you, in this season, this is the season to see the power of God, to keep your power balanced, to keep you stable. This is, is, is our generational time to share the gospel in its peak period now. And God has called this for us to hear him now more so than ever since March the 13th, which they declared what we're in now. And so now your pattern and your change, you must look to God, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. And so if we lead in that direction, God will be there. The Bible says that never has, ne he will not, never separate us. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 5, let your conversation be without covetous, content, with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may right now, not yesterday, tomorrow, go right now that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man should do to me. You got to take that from this word to you today. God never leaves you, and he's going to always be there. And so with that, I thank you for this moment. Thank you for allowing me to share this gospel with you. And know that one of our most important things to do in our day to day is to meditate and, and go over that word so when things are happening, that word is going to come to you. It's going to be like a, 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 a two-edged sword. 
is going to able to separate the moral from the bone. It's going to be able, God is going to be able to give you a clear direction. And when you get that clear direction, you take those scriptures that I close with y'all and you say, never will God leave me. And he wants me to walk bold during this time. He wants me to be there in spirit to let anybody and everybody know in this world what must they do to be saved as I share the gospel, as the church of the living God shared the gospel, as all of you viewers share the gospel like never before. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we pray that these words may land upon hearing ears and that we might react and go forth and be all that you called us to be. In Jesus' name, and now I pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless all. What a word. Pastor Billy truly brought it to us. You know Billy, he's always making us try to remember what scriptures we should be writing down and living by those scriptures. And it's so true, God did come through. Jesus set, should be our blueprint, blueprint and how we should live every day, waking up, following Jesus. So if you enjoyed the video, share with family and friends. If you were truly blessed, bless others. I know I enjoyed it. God bless.